Believe it or not, there's this thing called Canada Day. Don't be ignorant. <laughs> Here's some codes to save you some cash on your next Middle Eastern niche or designer fragrances. What's going on guys? My name is Neeb. Welcome back to Aromatics. I was actually talking to myself about don't be ignorant. Yeah, okay. So Canada Day is coming up June 28th. And so I'm recording this video about a couple days before because I got a little bit of an inside scoop that there's gonna be a huge sale on Fragrance Buy. Obviously, they're gonna be celebrating Canada Day because it's a Canadian based website that actually ships to the USA and I've been using them a lot. And I'm sure a lot of you guys, anybody that's in the space knows of Fragrance Buy. So a couple of good sales and I figured we'll talk about it with this fragrance haul, my last fragrance haul that I picked up from them. I've been saying, we're talking a little bit about Lectimus London in the last couple of weeks, I would say, and it really struck a little bit more interest lately. Uh, I wanted to revisit some of the older fragrances that might not have been, you know, for me or might not have been something that I considered prior to. And then they also have a new release and I figured this would be a good time to start. The new release is called Spice Diarno, but we're also gonna be talking about a couple of popular ones like Trajan and Imperium. So before we get started, let's go ahead and cut down all the details or chop it up and tell you guys exactly what's gonna be happening. So the sale is gonna be from June 28th to July 1st. The first 750 orders are gonna get a bunch of freebies like candles, PDM gels, there's gonna be body sprays and more stuff. So that's for the first 750 orders. Believe it or not, they get a crap ton of orders. Next 2,000 orders, so after the 750, you're going to get free samples. All these samples and freebies are automatically applied. You don't have to select anything. So basically there's an incentive for the first 2750 people that are ordering believe it or not like i said they get a lot of orders but not only that it's not just for the freebies they're going to have a 10 percent off site-wide code and the code is going to be cad157 but also they have like this loyalty system i'm like a freaking o addict and that's like the highest tier of course but for loyalty members the specifically the o collectors you're going to get an 11 off code that's going to be emailed to you uh and for the o addicts like myself you're going to get a 12 off code rather than that 10% off. So it's kind of nice to, you know, reward some of the ones that are purchasing a little bit more. Uh, you know, it's only one to 2%, but it's still something. So 10% off site wide CAD 157 and 11 and 12% off if you have uh, a loyalty status with them. And if you spend over 115 bucks USD, which I easily did, you can use code 157 SHIP as well. And you can stack that actually and get free shipping basically. So there you have it. That's the sale. Now we can get into the actual bread and butter of the video. So let's go ahead and get started. So three fragrances we're gonna be talking about here today. And I absolutely love the presentation of this house called Electimus London. Hands down, the heaviest bottle in the game. You could legitimately get a pump flexing this bad boy. I would say it's about like five pounds and it comes in a very grand box. So let's just look at the box right now while we're ahead. These aren't boxes that I keep. I don't keep boxes, gentlemen. Especially, I mean, considering, you have to really consider your size of collection. There are certain boxes, honestly, I wish I would have kept and I wanted to keep and it was heartbreaking to get rid of, but yeah, no, not happening. So Electus London comes in these boxes. It's pretty nice. It feels like a leather soft plush touch. And uh, this is just pretty much foam. The fragrance in itself is in there pretty deep. It's about a two inch cutout. So you actually have to work to get it out. On the back of the box, you're gonna have the name of the fragrance and a couple more information like ingredients, etc. And this is a pure parfum concentration. So their newest release, I saw oud, I saw myrrh, I saw a lot of vanilla, a lot of interesting notes, elemi, peppers, and I knew I had to have it. Another couple famous ones or more popular fragrances is going to be these two right here, which is called Imperium and Trajan. Imperium is one of their most popular fragrances and for very good reason. It's citrus it's floral and uh, it actually smells kind of familiar if you like the whole Aventus style fragrance you're going to like this one because it kind of blends it's not just it's definitely not just an Aventus it's not another clone in my opinion okay this has a lot of white florals and it has a certain creamy aspect or nature to it are you gonna remember it absolutely but you get much much more there's saffron there's vanilla there's a bright vibe to this fragrance and it actually smells like a lot more approachable too if you like Aventus, this is like a reimagined floral premium version of something like that. As I mentioned, I don't think it's a clone, but it definitely treads in that family. In a world of like Blockade, Hachivat, Aventus, you know, all of those are in the same family and this is another one in that family. So are they all different? Yes. Are they all the same? 
kinda, not really. They're in the family, like I said. And this is one of the best ones, honestly. It has this creamier natured vanilla. It almost adds like a slight bit of, my mouth waters when I smell this one. A bit muskier, less birchy. You still get the woodsy vibe, and I think there might be Gaillac wood, or yes, there actually is oud in the base as well. Scent profile, if you were to put this next to Hachibat for me, I would pick this one. Reason is it's much more polished. It's got those white florals. It's got a creamier, musky vanilla and less of that soil nuance. Is it there? Yes, it's still there, but it's more oody as well. Not animalic to my nose. It's really good. It's really good. This is a fragrance that I had once upon a time and I think I didn't really get to appreciate it that much. And the only thing that kind of steered me away from the fragrance was the first time I sprayed it on. I didn't get more than about six hours. And considering the price tag, that is something you definitely should consider. I plan on revisiting this and spraying it on for the actual scent profile, the premium nature of it, for the price that it goes for right now, which you can find it for under 200 bucks, I think it's worth it. I genuinely think it's worth it. It smells expensive. It doesn't just smell like another, you know, cheapy or another, you know, just straight up Aventus. Absolutely gonna remind you, done in a different way, much more refined, creamy, vanilla, and musky. Love this stuff. I mean, when you look at the price tag, and the one thing to consider is when you look at the price tag of this, it's under 160 bucks. So yeah, at that point, this has turned into a fragrance that's like, was once upon a time, okay, you know what, not the best longevity, into a, you should definitely grab this bad boy because for under 150 bucks, the premium nature of the way this smells, it's unbelievable. And six hours is average. Sure, I like beast mode performing fragrances, but as I gain more experience with scent profiles like this and a realistic expectation, I realize that six hours is actually average for fresh fragrances. Not everything has to be beastly. This isn't beastly, but the freaking refinement, next level stuff. Moving on to the next one, is Trajan, also for like under 160 bucks right now. So the initial thing that piqued my interest with, it, with this is a lot of the uh, recommendations or smells like BR540. So when I initially saw the fragrance, look at the atomizer on these, it's phenomenal stuff. Wow, yeah, it definitely smells like that. And I was during my craze of BR540, I absolutely loved that DNA, I wore it as a signature scent, and it was good while it lasted, but it started giving me headaches, I got a little tired of that amber woods, or yeah, just the amber woods mixed with the saffron. Now this one does smell a lot like that, except it doesn't seem as metallic, if that makes any sense. You're still gonna get that uh, sponge sugared saffron. Some people get doctor's office or gloves, and you're absolutely still gonna get those accords. This in fact smells like something that's closer to actually being inspired by potentially like clone status, sure, but at the same time, it does smell expensive. It smells extremely expensive. A couple of different aspects as well. This isn't as vanillic. To my nose, uh, BR540, at least on my skin, goes a bit more vanillic. And not only that, it's warmer. I'm talking BR540, not this one. This one seems to be a little bit lighter and more emphasized around the florals, kind of similar to what Imperium was doing in the sense. Uh, it's lighter, it's a little bit more lifted, and it just smells a bit more natural. That's what I like about this one. I'm not gonna say over BR540 because I'm over the DNA, but definitely smells a little bit more natural, making it smell slightly less metallic and synthetic. I don't know what happened, man. I was rocking BR540 for like a, a year and a half, daily. And then one day it was like flipping a switch and I could not stop. I could not get it off my mind. And now I'm just I'm BR540 out, man. And with that considered, this is something that's wearable. Yes, I'm still getting that DNA. I'm definitely still getting that DNA, but this seems a little less metallic and a bit more natural. So it really, it's up to you. This one adds, I believe, a couple of different notes. It adds some sage. It doesn't have uh, amber woods, but it has ambergris, but technically these are both synthetics. So it could be using uh, similar compounds to recreate that accord of both, but for whatever it's worth, it does seem lighter of a fragrance. So that's Trajan. Smells good. If you like the BR DNA, which a lot of people do, you're going to love this. For me personally, I'm BR'd out. I'm BR'd out. Moving on to the last one, and I saved the best for last, but this is very, it's very specific. It's gonna be very different. And in fact, might be my favorite from the house, but it's not, that does not quantify or qualify this fragrance as the best one from the brand. No, it's one of my favorites from the house, okay? So I've only dabbled into probably about six of their fragrances so far, Imperium being up there. This is probably going to be the safest entry for all of you or anybody that's considering going into this house, start with Imperium. You're gonna see their refinement, you're gonna see their quality really shine in this fragrance. I think it's a great one, seriously. Whether or not you believe it to be close to Aventus, etc., and regardless of the fact that it, it is, okay, it's still a great one and it's a different aspect. This one, however, 
for me, the most enjoyable. So let's start off with the notes. At the top, we've got cardamom, pink pepper, bergamot, lemon, and elemi. So quite a few interesting contrasting notes. There's woody, spicy, but there's also resinous, ambery, and citrus. So right at the top, it seems like it's gonna go pretty oriental. In the mid, we've got bran. Yes, iris, orange, leather, and thyme. Okay, interesting. And in the base, we've got vanilla, cashmere, and myrrh, and naroud. High quality ingredients that you can definitely sense in this one. Looking at the bottle in itself, it's also beautiful. I love the color gradient, and the atomizer is the same thing. So what you get with this fragrance is predominantly going to be this very ambery, and I mean like just this intense note of myrrh. And myrrh smells like this waxy, resinous, dark uh, amber fragrance, basically, or amber accord it gives off, at least for me personally. I actually work with myrrh and I make bakhur out of myrrh, which is incense. I love that stuff. Myrrh, dragon's blood, these are a couple of different resins that do it a lot darker, or like dark temple resins, etc. You can find like temple resins, which basically utilize a lot of accords that uh, can be found in like dragon's blood. They're darker, that's it, basically. But you get a lot more with this fragrance. At the top, you're gonna get elemi, which adds this more wax resin vibe but it contributes a little bit of this freshness like a little bit of a lime undertone the spices are definitely there as well but they're all enveloped in this it like the entirety of the fragrance the brand also adds a little bit more of this creamy nature coupled up with the iris a little bit of that leather and some of the myrrh really creates this creamy texture to the fragrance and that's exactly what I find this to be I was surprised I was genuinely surprised that this was a creamy fragrance. So it's it's lactonic. It smells like cream, literally. Except it smells like a oud and spice cream. Very different. You guys, I get suntan lotion vibes off of this. Unusual as hell. When you look at the notes, you're gonna be like, suntan lotion, what are you talking about? But yes, creamy leather coupled with oud, coupled with spices, coupled with this iris and bran and elemi. It's so unusual, but it's so addicting. When I first sprayed this on, I was like, suntan lotion? Really? Is it Hadaud? Like, where is it, bro? No. But then I wore it and I let this freaking, oh my God, I'm absolutely in love with this fragrance. It's not going to be for everybody. Literally envision sunscreen, that's Hadaud, and spice flavor. That's it. You know, a lot of people might argue, do I really want to spend that much on sunscreen and Hadaud? I personally would buy it again. I genuinely would buy it again. It has to be one of my favorite ones now from the brand, like I said earlier on, that I've tried personally. It's just something so polarizing, so different in a world of so many common fragrances and all of that. This has to be something completely new for me. That's it, plain and simple. Sure, I've smelled a lot of sunscreen style fragrances, but nothing ever done like this. And I would have never expected to get that vibe, like sunscreen, lotion, whatever. It sounds unusual, it smells unusual, but I've gone on record saying, and I will go on record saying again, some of my favorite fragrances are the most unusual ones. Contrasting notes, uh, just all of that stuff is really attention grabbing, head turning, and compliment factors are driven through the roof because of those exact uh, descriptors of unusual. So that's pretty much what I think about Spice Diarno. This is one that I fully wore and got a total of like eight to nine hours. I remember spraying this on before I went to bed. The next day was there on my uh, clothing, etc. I wouldn't say it's gonna give you more than about 12 hours, but still long lasting, smells amazing. And what's beautiful about this is the versatility. Because of the fact that it smells a little bit like sunscreen, you could even wear it in the summer. I wore it in like 85 degrees, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and it worked. Sure, there are fresher fragrances you can wear, but this will work all year round. I love this, I love this. I don't wanna give it a rating because it's gonna be super subjective, but I really, really like this fragrance. One of the most unique Oud style fragrances that I have in my fragrance. Unique doesn't necessarily mean the best, just so different, so freaking different. That's it, that's pretty much all I have to say about these three fragrances, you guys. If I had to rank them for personal enjoyment, it would definitely be uh, Spice Diarno, Imperium, and then Trajan. But if I had to recommend one, it would be Imperium for sure. Get your nose on this, you guys. For under 150 bucks right now, it's absolutely insane. I think it's, I think I picked it up for like 110. That's crazy. Yeah, amazing fragrance. The presentation alone, I think, is uh, worth something. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Happy Canada Day. Utilize that code if you can. Don't go out of your means and put yourself in a bad situation just because there's a sale. I'm sure there'll be plenty of sales, but if you had some stuff on your list and uh, you, know, you can afford to grab a couple, now would be the time. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.